In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform linear regression using Analytic Solver. We're using a data set from a trucking company. It contains the miles that the truck has driven, the gasoline consumed, the number of deliveries made, and the time that's taken on one route. Each record is one route, and this data worksheet contains 300 past routes. We also have a new data worksheet that contains 10 new routes information, but without the time. So we're going to use the 300 observation in the data worksheet to create a linear regression model and use it to predict the time that's going to take for each of these new routes. So let's get started. Under predict, select linear regression. We're going to select three independent variables, miles, gasoline consumption, and deliveries as the independent variables. And we're going to select time as the output variable. Next. So Analytics Solver provide us an option of partition data. Data partitioning is often used in predictive analysis models. Usually we would split the data into training set, validation set, and test set. However, we're not going to do it here. Analytics Solver also allows you to rescale the data. So we typically need to rescale the data if there are variables that are very different. For example, you have salary income that's up to like $1 million and versus you can have family size up to only 12. So you can use the rescaling data, you can standardize, normalize to make this variable's values comparable. We don't have such significantly different variables, so we're not going to use that either. We're going to select the fit intercept. That means we want to also compare if the model without selecting any of the independent variables. So this section contains a variety of statistics that analytics solver can compute and output for a linear regression model. So I'm going to briefly talk about each one of them. The ANOVA output generates a test statistic, or we call it the F statistic, and it's corresponding p-value for the hypothesis test. In general, we would like to see a small p-value, which allows us to reject the null hypothesis that there is no uh, linear relationship between the independent variables and the dependent variable. In other words, we would like to find a small p-value which indicates that there is a significant linear regression between the independent variables and the dependent variable. The variance covariance matrix provides a measure of the variance in each regression parameter as well as the covariance between each pair of the regression parameters. Variance refers to the spread of data set around its mean versus a covariance referred to the measure of the linear relationship between two variables. The multicollinearity diagnostics will help us diagnose whether there's correlation among the independent variables. If we find that, we would like to remove some of the independent variables so that we don't let them bias our model. And analysis of coefficients is necessary because that's how we can build the formula for the linear regression model. We will use the confidence prediction intervals and explain that in a later stage. The analysis of residuals generates the raw, standardized, studentized, and uh, deleted residual. For each observation, influence diagnostic generates the Cook's distance, the fits variance ratio, covariance ratio, leverage, and delete one variance. So all these measurements in general find how removing a observation impacts the model prediction. In the feature selection, so feature selection basically means to select only the significant variables to our model. There are different methods that can help us do that. We're going to choose the best subsets. I will explain briefly how each method works. In backward elimination, analytic solver removes the least significant independent variable. In forward selection, it's the other way around. Analytic solver adds the most significant independent variable currently not in the model. In sequential replacement, 
For a given number of independent variables, analytic solver sequentially replaces individual variables and retains the resulting model if the model performance improves. In stepwise selection, analytic solver begins with a model with no independent variables and at each iteration, it adds most significant variable currently not in the model and then remove the least significant variable currently in the model. Lastly, the best subset is what we want to choose. It consider two to the power of n possible combinations of n independent variables. So in here, we choose the maximum subset size to be three. This is coordinated to we have three independent variables, the miles, gasoline consumption, and deliveries. So total, we are considering two to the power of three, which is eight subsets. And then we're going to output the best subsets in each uh, combination of the variables. Next, we're going to select the summary report and let's finish. This will output several worksheets in the linear regression output. We see that the R square is 0 0.818. This is a pretty good R square. This means that our model can explain about 82% of our data. Typically, we say that R square is greater than 50 or 60% is a pretty good result. However, it still depends on your problem domain and your data set. And so the next in the predictor screening table, it basically checks if there is perfect collinearity amongst the independent variables. In this case, we didn't find any perfect collinearity. And so all the variable, all three independent variables are preserved. In the coefficients table, we see the intercepts and coefficient for each of the independent variables here. And not only that, we also see the p-value that shows the statistical significance. So with this coefficient information, we can make a formula for our linear regression model. We can say that time equals to 0 0.2324, which is the intercept plus 0 0.08 times miles plus, but it's a minus 0 0.12 multiplied by gasoline plus the 0 0.69 times the deliveries. So this is our model, but we're not done here yet. So we see that the p-value uh, is overall pretty low except for this one stands out to be not a significant. Let's just say that this variable gasoline consumption has a high p-value. So we suspect that this variable is insignificant to the model. Let's take a look at our feature selection results. In the feature selection results output, we see that there are four kinds of best subsets. Subset one only has intercept. It doesn't include any of the independent variables. Subset 2 includes intercept and miles. And subset 3 includes two variables, which is intercept, miles, and deliveries. Subset 4 includes intercept and all three independent variables. And then let's take a look at the best set details. Let's focus on the R square. So we can see that from subset 1 to 4, R square gradually increase. But from subset 3 to subset 4, we see a very minor increase. That indicates that maybe it's not worth the cost of adding an additional variable. We can just keep it as subset 3, which only use two independent variables. They are miles and deliveries. So again, we see that gasoline consumption is not selected using the best set feature selection. So this shows us that subset three is the best linear regression model. Now for a Windows version of Analytics Solver, you should be able to click this link and bring up a linear regression window. Once again, only include the miles and delivery variables, but it doesn't work in my Mac version. So what I'm going to do is to manually create this model again, um, but this time only select miles and deliveries. All right, so under the data mining, select linear regression.
This time we're only going to select miles and deliveries and the dependent variable still is time. Next, um, we select analysis for coefficients and confidence prediction intervals. I will explain this later in the outputs. Feature selection, we don't need feature selection this time because we already got the best subsets. Next. So in here, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to check scoring in the new worksheet. We're going to select that and then navigate to new data. So for some reason, for my Mac version, this data range at times, it doesn't update. Mm, we can still see that it still shows the 300 um, rows from the other worksheet. So what I'm going to do is to manually change that to a1 to E11. And then so this one will automatically update and that way I can match by name. Otherwise it will give me an error. Uh, so this means that I'm matching the miles um, column with the miles from the other worksheet where my model come from. And so is the deliveries. So now I can click finish. This will output several worksheets. So it output the usual linear regression output worksheets where it provides information of the model. And um, we can see that the R square is the 81.73% as we saw in the best subset number three. And uh, the predictor screening also um, didn't find a perfect collinearity between the uh, these two independent variables. We can use the coefficients to create the formula for our, for our linear regression model. Time equals to 0 0.13 plus 0 0.07 times miles plus 0 0.69 multiplied by deliveries. So that's the model. And we can see that the p values still shows statistically significant linear relationship between miles and deliveries and time. Next, we're going to take a look at the intervals worksheet. So there are two intervals outputting. One is the 95% confidence, the other one is the 95% prediction. The 95 confidence interval is an interval estimate of the mean travel time for a route assignment with the given number of miles and deliveries. Versus the 95% of prediction interval is an interval estimate on the prediction of travel time for individual route assignment with the given number of miles and deliveries. So let's take a look at the first record we're trying to predict with 105 miles and three deliveries. The predicted time is shown in the new score data sheet that is 9.25 hours. So this shows us that we are 95% confident that the population mean of travel time for 105 miles routes with three deliveries is between the 9.43 and 9.78 hours. And the we are 95% confident that the travel time for single 105 miles route with three deliveries will be between 7.96 and 11.24. We can see that the prediction interval is wider than the confidence interval. This is because that we're able to estimate the mean value of the dependent variable more precisely than we can predict an individual value of the dependent variable. So in the training score worksheet, in addition to the R square, RMS is another indicator for linear regression model performance. As a rule of thumb, a model with an RMSE that is less than 10% of the average of the dependent variable is a good model. 10% of the 7.30.703, so this uh, RMSSE it's just a little bit greater than 10% of the average time predicted, but it is still a pretty close one. 
um, so it's not too bad. And lastly, in the new score, we see in the new score tab, we see the um, predicted time for each of the 10 new records or 10 new routes. So to recap, linear regression is a basic and commonly used type of predictive analysis method or machine learning algorithm. Linear regression is used when the dependent variable is continuous or binary coded categorical variable. The case of one explanatory or independent variable is called simple linear regression, whereas for more than one, then it's called multiple linear regression. Feature selection is often used in the process to find only the significant variables to be used in the model. The best subset that we demoed in this video should end up giving you most if not all independent variables with low p-values. For regression models, we look at a p-value for relationship significance and R-square for model performance or goodness of fit. There is no established association between p-value and R-square. This all depends on the data. R-square tells you how much variation is explained by your model. The greater the R-square, the better the model is. Whereas p-value tells you about the f-statistic hypothesis. So if the p-value is less than the significance level, which usually is 0.05, then your model fits the data well. Therefore, you have four scenarios. Scenario one, low R-square and low p-value. This means that your model doesn't explain much of the variation of the data, but it is significant because of the low p-value. So it's better than not having a model. Scenario two, low R-square and high p-value. This means that your model doesn't explain much of the variation of the data, and it's not significant. So obviously this is the worst scenario. Scenario three, you have high R-square and low p-value. This means your model explains a lot of variation within the data and it's significant. So this is the best scenario. Scenario four, you have high R-square and a high p-value. This means that your model explains a lot of variation within the data, but it is not significant. Therefore, the model is worthless. So you will want the best scenario and scenario one. I hope this helps. See you next time.